434. Welcome to the Power and Victory Morning Devotional. How to prosper in business during wartime. Get ready. God's going to show you and God's going to equip you. My Jesus loving, real estate, business minded, ambitious entrepreneurs. Here we go. 434. Boom. In the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 34. It says they sold land and homes. They laid the proceeds, the profits, the commissions. That's the money. That's the dough. They laid it at the apostles' feet. Now that's real estate with a reason. Prosperity with a purpose. How to prosper in business during wartime. Welcome everybody to the Power and Victory Morning Devotional. Jeff Lewis coming to you live from the beaches in Tampa Bay. Home of the palm trees, the sugary white sand, Caribbean blue waters. The dolphins are jumping. Good morning. So glad you're with us. This is the Power and Victory Morning Devotional. These are short, 10, 15-minute, faith-filled, fiery, anointed messages for you entrepreneurs, you in real estate, that God can equip you, God can prepare you, God can add to you so that in these last days you can prosper. So glad you're here. We've labeled this the power and victory. Aren't you glad it's not the defeated and depressed? So good news, God's got you here. God's got you here to equip you. And I got good news to you. As we share with you today, how do you prosper during all these crazy times, wars and all that going on, Get ready. Pound the heart button. God's equipping you to win. Yeah. All I do is win, 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 win. Yeah, victory. Oh, sweet victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Come on. When you're with Jesus, you have victory. You overcome. And we're so glad you're here. I've labeled this today. How do you prosper in business during wartime? Good morning, North Carolina. Bless everybody. You know, uh, over the last three weeks or so, we've been sharing with you about prosperity. What does the Bible say about prosperity? You know, the Bible says a lot about it, right? The Bible says diligent hands will produce what? Wealth. And I know people don't like that. Diligent hands produce wealth. A generous person shall prosper. It's all over the Bible. Matter of fact, God says, beloved, I wish above all things that you'd be in good health and prosper. And of course, that's exactly the opposite of what the devil wants. And the devil wants people sick. He wants to cut off the heads of babies. That's the devil. And he wants people broke. But I've labeled this today, how to prosper in business during wartime. So we began talking about prosperity. We began talking to you about that spiritual blessing that allows you to multiply and be fruitful that comes from God. We began talking to you a favor. And then all of a sudden this, this war broke out in Israel. And I've said this to you earlier in the week, and I'm going to say it to you again. You know, during this lockdown, during COVID-19, this lockdown, national ministers that have a national platform we're absolutely silent during this worldwide shutdown. They were silent. They would began talking, keep talking about whatever they were talking about. And how many of you know God's people, God wants to equip his people. And so I decided, listen, we're not going to just continue on as is. We're going to talk about what's going on in the world. There's a war going on right now in Israel. We don't forget there's a war going on right now in Ukraine. And you're in business and here you are. And so we're going to talk about it today. God's going to equip you today. So come on, you know what we do. When we open up the word of God, the word of God is alive. The word of God is active. You're about to sit under the anointed word of God, the eternal word. Flowers fade, the grass withers, but the word of God remains forever. So on the count of three, I want to hear you lift up your voice. Give the Lord a shout of faith. I want to hear it. Let's go. Here we go. One, two, let's go. Come on. God's going to pour out his spirit in these last days. You're going to be in the right place at the right time. So, so glad you're with us. You can type in the chat. What state are you listening to the broadcast? 
And again, if I haven't the privilege of meeting you, Jeff Lewis, I met Jesus 32 years ago in a business meeting. Over three decades ago, I was literally uh, suffering with panic attacks, debilitating, couldn't function, and I was in a business meeting, and the business people, notice I wasn't in a church. What's up, Tony? What's up, everybody? I wasn't in a church. I wasn't in a revival meeting. I was in a business meeting, and the business people made room for Jesus, and I encountered Jesus in a business meeting. Now, get ready. Listen, I tell you right now, that all over this country, people are going to encounter Jesus through business, and you, my friend, are in the right place at the right time. You're going to be part of it. Come on, pound the heart button. Let God know you're awake and get the devil running for the Motrin. So I've labeled this. What's up, Corey? What's up, Daniel? I've labeled this how to prosper in business during wartime, right? And so you see what's going on over in Israel, right? It's horrific. Um, and, and, and I want to let you know, uh, it's very easy to know whose side is God on. The Bible says about God's people, Israel, and that land, he said, I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse those who curse you. And I'm telling you, the devil hates that land. He hates those people, right? How many times over the, over the centuries has the devil tried to literally wipe them out? Do you know that Hamas has literally, if you look in their covenants, they have a covenant to wipe those people off the earth. You know, I mean, listen, God's people, right? We have enemies and the enemies that we have. Listen, the Bible says we'll bless the enemies. If we need to use the second amendment, we, we, we will. But we're not on the offensive looking to kill people. Unfortunately, these people, if you don't follow their way, right? It's like, if you didn't come to our church, we're going to wrap our explosives around our waist and blow you up, right? Imagine if, if, if as Christians we did that. So you're in what we showed you yesterday is that you are in the last days, right? Peter got up and he preached that Pentecostal message and he said, this, these men are not drunk as you suppose, but as it was prophesied by the prophet Joel, he said in these last days, I'll pour out my spirit. So again, type in the chat, I'm living in the last days. You are. That will really help you. Just, just like I said yesterday, if you're at the mall, a mall you've never been to, and you go up to that big board and it shows you that star, you are here. It will help you get everything into order when you know the day, the time, and the seasons you're in. You are living in not just the last days. Peter proclaimed 2,000 years ago that, God, that this was the beginning of the last days. But you, my friend, are in the last moments. You are in the very, matter of fact, you know, uh, I believe it was David who said, I've learned to number my days. Do you know you only got so many Christmases left? If you haven't seen my private Facebook, we're celebrating Christmas early. I see all these Halloween everywhere and Gay Pride Month. You know, I might start taking a whole year in celebrating the birth and the resurrection and all the other good things God's provided for us. But I want you to open up your Bibles again to Matthew 24. I've labeled this today, How to Prosper in Business During Wartime. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 3, later Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, when will all of this happen? What will be the signal of your return and the end of the world? How many of you know Jesus is getting ready to return? Jesus told him, don't let anyone deceive you, for many will come in my name claiming I'm the Messiah. Hear that? They will deceive many. Wow. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. There you go. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. That's it, Daniel. I'm living in the last days, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. I'm going to say this one more time. That people will say, well, there's been wars forever. Yeah, but something happened on May 14th, 1948, that put this on a very clear prophetic time clock that unfortunately many ministers, leaders do not even understand. In Matthew 24, any any Bible scholar will tell you, I don't care if they're Baptist, whatever, that the fig tree is representing of Israel. And the Bible says when, when Israel, when the fig tree buds again, isn't it amazing that Israel, if you think of nation over centuries and over, over 
thousands of years, they don't keep the same language. They don't keep the same land. They don't keep the same culture. But I remember when I was a little boy, right? My family is Jewish. I'm Jewish. And, and, and I want you to let you know, I'm not just passionate about what's going on there in Israel just because I'm, I'm a Jewish person. No, I'm a Christian, right? And God, Jesus is coming back in Israel, isn't he? He's coming back there. He's not coming back in Chicago. He's not coming back in Amsterdam. Listen, he's coming back, physically coming back to all my pre-terrorist fans. If you guys haven't ever heard of a term, you're going you're gonna to learn some things. There's some ministers that many of you follow. You read their Bibles. You read their books. And they are what are called pre-terrorists. It's kind of a weird word. What that means is they don't believe Jesus is coming back physically. Yeah, some of you follow them. Some of them, some of them, you don't hear them talking about these things because if they told you what they really believe, you would never follow their ministries. <laughs> and I'm telling you, you listen to their worship, you read their Bibles, man, they're pre-terrorists. Here's what that means. They do not believe Jesus is physically coming back to the earth. Even though the scripture, you remember, remember when Jesus uh, rose from the dead, he lived with the disciples or he showed himself to the disciples for 40 days. And then you remember he went up on the clouds and you remember the disciples were looking up and two angels show up and they said, hey, why are you look, looking up into the clouds? The same way you saw him leave is the same way he's coming back, right? He's coming back on the clouds again. He's coming back to set up his kingdom in Israel. These pre-terrorists don't believe that. Ask yourself that. Ask yourself these people that you follow, when's the last time you've heard them talking about the return of Jesus? Matter of fact, you don't hear them talk about a lot of basic things. You don't hear them talking about born again. Jesus said you must be born again to enter the kingdom of heaven. You don't hear them talk about born again. Matter of fact, you don't hear them talk about a lot of, you don't hear them talk about the cross. You don't hear, where's the last time you heard the cross? The cross. You don't hear them talking about the return of Jesus. You need to pay attention. Do you hear what the Bible just said in the last days? Many will be deceived. And we'll be sharing more with you that, that next week. I got to get to this. So Jesus said, you're going to hear of wars, of rumors of wars. Yet do not panic. See, now that's why God equips you. When you realize, and today is going to help you. When you realize the day and the season you're in and how God is equipping you. You are going to be prepared on this broadcast this morning. So I want you to buckle up, turn the phone off, unless you're on the phone, and just dial in here for the next few minutes. Don't panic. You know why you don't panic? Is when you know, first of all, who's, who's in control. The devil's not in control. God is, now listen, just because I say God's in control, that doesn't mean everything that happens on the earth is what God wants. Can you, can you get that? So many people get confused with this, and this is why they get mad at God. Well, God, if you're God, why would you allow those babies, those infants, those precious ones to be beheaded right now in Israel? Why would you allow that? Listen, what God allows, this will help you write this down. This may be just the thing you needed to hear, which turns it around for you and your family. Just because God allows it does not mean God wills it. Let me say that again. Just because God allows it. Listen, if God wanted to allow me to go, right, to, to wrap up the weekend and go, go do meth and go sleep around with three women, he would allow it. He gave men free will. Doesn't mean he wills it. Some people talk about God's sovereignty. Well, God is sovereign. Yeah, he is sovereignly set up the rules on this game where he has given men free will. Now, Jesus is coming back and he's going to settle accounts soon. And those people who think they're getting away with all of that wickedness, their wickedness over the money, their wickedness over the food, their wickedness over the water, they think they're going to get away with it. But God is coming back to settle accounts. I want to let you know there's a beautiful heaven with lots of rewards and there's a hot hell with lots of punishment. And it's they're both eternal. God is going to settle the account. So just because God allows it, doesn't mean he wills it. Do not panic. Okay, here's where I wanted to get to today. That was all preparation. I want you to hang with me for an extra uh, 15 minutes. Let me just say good morning to you that are on the broadcast. Let me see if I can see who's out there. I see Darlene. What's up, Gary? What's up, Deja? What's up, my friend? So glad you guys are here. Thanks for joining me. This is going to help you. All right, here we go in Matthew 25. 
Matthew 25, this is what I wanted to read you. How to prosper in business during wartime. Listen, you're, these, these things, there's going to be an increase of this. Jesus calls this time the beginning of birth pains. The beginning of birth pains. That's where you are on the prophetic map. You're in the beginning of birth pains. We're not in the seven-year tribulation right now, right? Some people will think that, right? There is a seven-year period coming. And this political leader called the Antichrist, he's an actual man, and, and, and there is an Antichrist spirit that wants to control the nations. That's what you experienced during COVID-19. That was the devil's first bite at the apple. I don't want to say his first bite of the apple, getting the world prepared for his plan during those seven years. He has a plan. The Bible tells you about it. There's going to be a, a political ruler. He's literally going to come in and say, peace and peace. He's going to actually uh, uh, even help people. And then he's going to start to take over nations. He's going to have a collection of 10 nations tightly gathered around him. Adolf Hitler. Remember, Adolf Hitler started to take over nations. It's going to be Adolf Hitler times a million. Then in three and a half years into this seven year period, he's going to go into God's temple and he's going to declare himself this man. He's going to try to copy Jesus. He's going to declare himself to be God and demand worship. Well, he's going to be one world religion, one world leader, one world money system. Now, listen, you can't pray against that. It's going to happen. God is going to use this for a lot of different reasons. And he's literally going to demand people to take a mark on their hand or forehead to be able to buy or sell, eat, travel, any of that. Does that ring a bell? Does your spidey senses start to be awakened of what you just walked through? The Bible calls that the antichrist spirit. John said that spirit, that, that antichrist spirit is on the earth right now. Okay, so now look at this. The, I, I said all of that. I wanted to get to this. Matthew 25, Jesus speaking. He says this. The kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. I want you to type in the chat bridegroom. You're going to see, especially as we get closer to Jesus, you're going to get a revelation that the body of Christ is his bride and Jesus is the bridegroom. You're going to hear that teaching more and more and more prominent because the Bible says he's coming back for a spotless what? Bride. Is he coming back for a drunk, sleeping around, fudging it, sinning every day? No, he's coming back for a what? A spotless bride who has made herself ready. Now listen to this. How to prosper in business during war times. Five of the, of the uh, uh, virgins, they took their lamps. Five of them were foolish and five of them were wise. Check that out. Five of them were foolish. Five of them were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil. Type in the chat oil. They did not take enough oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. Hear that? Preparation. I want you to type that in the chat preparation five were prepared five were not prepared do you see that five were prepared five were not prepared listen one of the things that god has you on this broadcast and god is going to bring you around if you're hungry and if you're desiring and if, and if your heart is right and you want to know the things of god listen he's going to bring you around ministries like this to prepare you and make sure you're prepared with plenty of oil I'm going to be talking to you a lot about oil and we'll get to as much as we can. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. That's what the Bible says. When Jesus come back, it'll be like in the days of Noah. It'll be like in the days of Lot. Do you know that our, uh, uh, our secretary of transportation is a absolute flaming homosexual? You know, people don't even like to talk about that. The Bible talks all about it. That, that's one of the reasons I got my Christmas tree up. I'm celebrating Christ. I'm celebrating the birth of Christ. Why? They're going to take a whole month. Come on, I'll take the whole year, right? And so, so literally it says in the last days, like in the days of Lot, they parade that around. If you would have thought 50 years ago, they would throw parades in D.C. over homosexual activity. My friends, do you, do you get it now? You're in the last days. You're in the last of the last days. Many people are drowsy. He says, like in the days of Noah, he was trying to give them out a warning. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Rain's coming. Rain's coming. Jesus is coming. Eternity is at hand. And it says suddenly 
destruction. The door to the ark was closed. They became drowsy. The Bible says when he comes back, they'll be eating and, and, and eating and drinking. See, this, this is why, listen, alcohol dulls you. Alcohol puts you physically to sleep. Alcohol dulls your spirit. The Bible says in these last days, be sober. It actually says that. Be sober and be alert. Let me finish this, and I'm going to make my last couple things I want to share with you. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and fell asleep. See that? At midnight, they were aroused by a shout, and the bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. And all the virgins got up, prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others who were not prepared, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others said, no, we don't have enough for us and you. Go buy some for yourselves. And while they went out to buy some oil, the bridegroom came. Those were ready went in. You catching this? Those that were ready went in into the marriage feast. Come on, into the marriage feast. Woo, the marriage feast. And the door was locked. And later when the five other bridesmaids or virgins came, calling, Lord, Lord, open the door, let me in. He called back, believe me, I don't know you. And then here's his point. So you must also keep watch for you don't know the day or the hour your Lord will return. Listen, he's talking to us about preparation. He's talking this about preparation. Listen, hang with me for the next 10 minutes. He's talking to you about being prepared. I want to talk to you about oil. Number one, oil represents the Holy Spirit. Do you know so many people are absolutely clueless about the Holy Spirit? They don't understand who he is. He's a he. He's not an it. He's not a cloud. He's not goosebumps. He's not a dove. He is the all. He is Almighty God, he is all-knowing, ever-present, all-powerful. His name is the Holy Spirit, and he is the oil. He is God on the earth right now. Christ in you, the Spirit of God in you now. And you remember Jesus breathed on his disciples. <sighs> he breathed on them, right? And then, so the Holy Spirit, and he says, receive the Holy Spirit. So the disciples had received the Holy Spirit. That's when they got born again. That's when the Holy Spirit came on the inside of them. In the Old Testament, he was only on prophets and kings. He, he was inside of them. But then listen to this. In the book of Acts, he told those same disciples, listen to all my Baptist friends, listen to all my mainline denominational friends. He told those disciples that had the Holy Spirit in them, he said, don't go out ministering yet. He died and rose again. He showed himself to him over 40 days and he said, listen, wait in Jerusalem, wait in Jerusalem till you receive power, oil from on high. And it says the disciples for 10 days waited in the upper room. There was 120. And in the book of Acts chapter 2, it says on the day of Pentecost, right? On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit now came on, oil on them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. My friends, it's one thing for me to drink this iced coffee decaf two creams no sugar but it's another thing for me to go walk into an ocean of ice ice coffee listen being baptized in the holy spirit this gift it's a gift you don't earn it you don't deserve it listen in these last days prospering during wartime you absolutely need to be not well you know i'll take the prosperity thing and, you know, I'll take the uh, salvation ticket. I don't want to go to hell. But, you know, this baptism in the Holy Spirit thing, this speaking in other tongues thing. A lot of people are getting ready for a wake up call. You need the oil. Type that in the chat. You need the oil. You don't need just a little oil. You don't need just just on the brim. You need an overflow of the Holy Spirit. And some of you and some people go to churches that have no clue. They have no moving of the Holy Spirit. There is no baptism in the Holy Spirit with other with speaking in tongues as an evidence of that. You need the oil. That's it. Whoever my friend is that just say that that's it. You need the oil. The oil in business. Listen, you know, let me tell you what that oil will do. And here's how we're going to end. Here's what that oil will do. You remember David, King David, right? David was a, was a young shepherd boy and he was out in the pastures and the prophet was coming to his dad, Jesse's house. And Jesse lined up all of his sons 
and he was going to anoint the next king, oil. He anointed him with oil. And he went through all the lines of the sun and the handsome and the tall and the all put together ones. He said, nope. No, 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 that's not one. Do you have any other sons? Well, I, I do have one. I do have one out there in the pasture. Now, listen, his dad didn't even call him to the meeting when the prophet of God was coming to the home. That's how much he was looked over. And maybe people have looked over you, but I'm telling you what, the anointing, the oil on your life will not only keep you, it will advance you and prosper you even during wartime. So they called David up from the pasture. Come on up. And Samuel said, yep, that's the one. And he dumped oil all over King David. Now listen to this. So now you know this. King David out there in the pasture, right? Uh, he's out there in the pasture, and all of a sudden he gets the, the call from dad to go out to war to see his brothers at war. Remember, he had been anointed with oil, didn't he? He had been anointed with oil. You need to be anointed with oil. And so he went out to the war. And he heard the war cries of the enemy. Amen. He heard Goliath. Right. And he's like, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? And you guys know the story. He went to King Saul and he said, hey, King Saul, don't worry about it. I'll take this guy out. And the king was like, who is this teenager? Right. And, and again, remember, David was like, well, what do I get for taking out the giant? Tell me again. No taxes. I get the girl and I get to be a national hero. One more time. No taxes. I get the girl and I become a national hero. Move out of the way. And the king tried to put his armor on David. Right. And David said, King, I can't do this. But let me tell you what. When I was out in the pasture, I took out the bear when they tried to come and take over my sheep. I took out the lion and the bear. And I'm telling you what, the same God that allowed me to do that with my bare hands. He's going to allow me to take out this uncircumcised Philistine. And you know that David destroyed that that giant Goliath in a moment in a moment. And he literally began to then uh, become a hero. And, you know, the end of the story that he ended up becoming the king of Israel. How did all that happen? How did he prosper in wartime? Well, he was being prepared. He was prepared with the oil. God had anointed him. You need the oil. Number two, with that oil, he took out the lion and the bear. He had been taking out small victories. You in business. Come on. You literally taking over as the leading realtor in your area. You becoming that person of influence and impact, right? You literally are anointed in these end times with the oil to bring the kingdom of God on the earth because the devil is defeated. Jesus is Lord. And you in these last days are not here to just get by and let the devil run buckshot over you. No, you are going to win. You're going to prosper. You're going to advance. You're going to bring the kingdom of heaven and it's yes you but you need the oil you need the oil joshua said this in joshua 1 11. joshua said this he said prepare today for in three days we take the land 434 what god's wanting to do the reason you're on this broadcast the reason the devil hasn't taken you out is here you are now god is preparing you god's preparing you spiritually you need the oil you need the oil of God. You need the Holy Spirit, not just in you. Thank God he's in you. You have that anointing in you, but he, he, he needs to come on you. Read it. It's in Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 10, and Acts 19. Acts 2, Acts 8, Acts 10 and 19. Let me read that to you again. Acts 2, the Holy Spirit came upon them all. The Virgin Mary spoke in tongues. All the disciples, they all spoke in tongues as an evidence that they were the Holy Spirit had come upon them. Then in Acts 8, the Samaritans received the Lord and they literally asked for, for, for John and Peter to come to them. And they, they had already baptized in water. They laid hands on them and they all received the Holy Spirit. See, different. The Holy Spirit was in them, but the Holy Spirit had not yet come on them. Read it. Acts 10, Cornelius, Peter preaching at Cornelius' house. While Peter is preaching, the Holy Spirit came on all of them and they all began to speak in tongues as the evidence that they had been filled, anointed with the Holy Spirit. And then they got baptized in water. And again in Acts 19, Paul comes up to these disciples and he says, did you receive the Holy Spirit? It's the first question he asked them. Did you receive the Holy Spirit? This is not a side issue. This is not a back room back at the, you know, at the summer camps. No, or the conferences. No, you need the oil on your life. And I want you to lift up your hands right now. There's no need to go through this broadcast. God is not. Listen, I literally have ministered. I, I've had 
masses of people in front of me and literally as I ministered to them, just not me teaching them to speak in tongues, bam, they all began to speak in tongues radically. They began to speak in this heavenly language. And then I remember being at a door, I've been at doorsteps with 13 year olds and just simply laying hands on them and out of the blue, not me teaching them yabba daba, no, no, out of the blue, they just got their hands lifted up and all of a sudden, and they start speaking. This is the Bible, my friends, and you need the oil lift up your hands right now lift up your hands i'm going to pray for you right now let me i just want to put a little music on right here hallelujah thank you jesus i thank you father in jesus's mighty name i thank you for the holy spirit coming upon all of my friends right now holy spirit you come upon them right now come on ask the holy spirit to come upon you to equip you in jesus's mighty name Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that you come upon them even right now in Jesus' mighty name. Come on, five minutes. Five minutes. God's preparing you to win. You're going to be anointed to prosper in these last days, even during wartime. The Holy Spirit comes upon you right now. Just receive the Holy Spirit right now. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. He comes upon you right now. In your spirit, this language, it, it, you won't know what it is. It just will bubble out of your spirit, out of your belly. Let it out. Let it out. It's a language. It's your own prayer language. It's the Holy Spirit coming upon you in power to be his witnesses. Receive the Holy Spirit right now, right through your phone, right through the TV, right through the, the computer. Receive the Holy Spirit right now. Receive it right now. Just let it out. Come on, let it out. Kore baba. Nisha kora basa kiaba. Ye kare baba barobo so kora ba. Oil, oil, oil for the last days. Fresh oil on your heads. Oil to be prepared. Oh, we're filled up with oil. We got plenty of oil. We're ready for the bridegroom. Come on, he's filling you up right now. Come on, just receive for a minute. Just receive. Come on, the oil's going to turn it all around for you. You're going to go from being weak to strong. You're going to be going from sick to healed. You're going to be going from poor to prosperous. Come on, receive fresh oil for these days. Come on, receive. Come on, I want you to type in the chat. Type in the chat right now what you're experiencing. You're going to experience God. He's not just some book. He's not just some book. He's not some story. He's the living God. The Holy Spirit comes upon you and equips you and prepares you in these last days. You can type in the chat right now. You can type in the chat. Listen, it's real. You'll feel you. Sometimes you'll feel fire. You'll feel heat. Sometimes you'll feel a cool breeze. Sometimes you won't feel anything. But I promise you, he is faithful. I have seen many, many men instantly. You don't have to earn it. You don't have to wait for it. You don't have to tarry for it. The veil has been torn. The Holy Spirit's been poured out. And you need the oil in these last days to prosper in business. You're going to get innovation. You're going to get victory. God's going to open up doors for you. Goliaths are going to appear. You're going to take them down, and you're going to go from nothing to something in one day, in one day, and it's going to happen by the oil. Come on, pound the heart button. Let God know you're awake. Listen, and I'm telling you what, some people poo-poo on this. Some people, they don't, oh, I want to hear, let me just hear this. I just want to hear about prosperity. Well, listen, my friends, then you're going to be one of those like those that were, didn't have the oil. And we just read what happened away from me. I didn't know you. You need the oil. We're not leaving the Holy Spirit in the back room. We're not ashamed. I am absolutely not ashamed of the Holy Spirit. I won't I won't downplay the Holy Spirit. You need he's not a cherry on top. He's not a well. Well, I'll take that on the buffet or not. No, he is a necessity. He is God on the earth. He not only needs to be in you, you being born again, but he needs to come on you and you need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. Fresh oil on your head so that you can prosper doing these last days. Let me read you one more scripture. 
I want to hear your testimonies. You can email us. Here's our email. I want to hear your testimonies. You can email us at 434nation at gmail.com. Listen to this, and then I'm going to let you go. Look at this in Psalm 23, verse 5. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. There it is. My cup overflows with blessings. When does your cup overflow? When, you, when your head is anointed with oil, your cup will overflow with blessing. In business, favor, blessing, prosperity, all the things we've been talking to you about comes through the overflowing of the oil. God is preparing you to win. God is preparing you for victory. 434, pound the heart button. Let God know you're awake. Get the devil running for the Motrin. Do you know, now listen, you know this is true. You know that you could go to church for 30, 40 years and never hear what I just said to you. That's it, Sylvia. Sylvia says, I need the oil. Deja says, you need the oil. Darlene, amen, Jeff, Gary, oil. Come on. Yes. So 434, a couple things I want to share with you as we wrap it up here today. I want you to make sure you get to a good Bible-believing church this weekend. I want you to share this with you. I want to give you an opportunity to partner with us. Listen, we are in the midst of bringing this gospel to the marketplace. Hear me. You're going to see our convention centers. You're even going to hear of uh, coliseums. You're going to see stadiums filled up with business people. And just like me 32 years ago in Houston, Texas, the gospel is in power with healing and miracles people being delivered and set free salvation you're going to see it in the marketplace and if you want to sow a seed into that we haven't been here for a week a month a year we've been here two and a half years and we're just getting warmed up you can become a 434 financial partner and sow a seed i want to encourage you today do something ask the lord what you would do the bible says when you sow generously you shall reap generously I want to encourage you today. What would the Lord have you sow into this marketplace ministry? And then what are you believing God for? The Bible says give and it will be given back to who? To you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. The Bible says those that sow generously shall reap generously. So you can sow a financial seed. Again, thank you to all of our 434 partners. We have partners. Jesus had partners. We're bringing this to the nation and beyond the gospel. He's going to pour out his spirit in these last days in the marketplace. At Venmo, you can sow a seed at the 434 agents today. PayPal, 434 agents. You can mail your check to Jeff Lewis, P.O. Box 8052, Madeira Beach, Florida, 33738. So you can write those down, take a picture of that. If you need that emailed to you, then you can email us at 434nation at gmail.com. You know that we've just launched our business brokerage and business uh, referral training where you can refer businesses to our team and receive uh, large chunks of commission money as we offer them business services and business brokerage, the buying and selling of their business, dentists, car dealerships. If you haven't downloaded our podcast, The Power and Victory Morning Devotional, make sure you do that, Apple, Spotify, and everywhere you do your podcasting. 434, the oil, fresh oil from heaven. You need that oil to be prepared to prosper in these last days, just like David during wartime. He prospered. Why? Because he was anointed. I want to hear your testimonies. 434nation at gmail.com. Again, make sure you go to a anointed Bible-believing church this weekend. 434, we got some exciting things to tell you about next week. We're going higher, further, and faster. And all of us, we're doing it together. Love you guys. Have a good weekend. Bye.